<coughs> Hi, I'm Scott Price. Welcome to Price. I work for Bath Back Theatre. I'm here at um at Hamer Hall um today in Melbourne, Australia. <coughs> I'm actually here with um with John from Holloway, who's the artistic director of the Melbourne Festival and is a comedian and I s and I'm speaking to him right now. Um, John from Holloway, thanks for your time. Uh, thank you for inviting me. <coughs> um, why did you pick this um this room and what significance does this room have to you? Well, uh, admittedly, it's the first time I've been in this room, um, but it was uh, designed by John Truscott, who was the second director of the Melbourne Festival, um, and he was a designer. He, he won Oscars, which I think are in the corner somewhere, for designing. So, I mean, this was the time when festival directors had a skill. They could actually do something like design an incredibly um, <laughs> great but slightly ridiculous room. <clears throat> so what are basically, like, the schools that he had, like... That he has or that I have? Uh... Well, that you have. I have. Okay. Well, I, I'm. Uh, I, I trained as a theatre director and uh, worked as a theatre director for a bunch of years, and uh, I was also uh, I was a stand-up comedian for about five minutes. It might have been ten, but um, certainly not more than that. It was awful uh, for everyone. I mean, I think that was no one disagreed with that. And then, um, and and then I've been directing and and programming and producing theatre since then, and. Um, my job really is to go into a city and work out what it is and what it needs and what it wants and what it doesn't know and then try and um, change something with programming. Um, what sort of like comedy shows have you done like in the past? In terms of actual directing shows, probably seven professional, sh fully professional shows, about 10 community shows with professional companies and uh, actually probably more like 20 actually and a, and a bunch of uh, youth theatre shows in terms of programming and producing it's hundreds and I mean it might get to the thousands I mean I've been, I've been doing it now for about 20 years uh, putting gigs on yeah. uh, and so and I've, I must put on 100 gigs a year so that's, I, I can't do the maths but that's a lot <coughs> obviously yes, that's for your shows but I was discussing about comedy shows I was just wondering what sort of comedy shows you've done uh, when I was Making comedy shows, uh, it would have been just standing in front of an audience and and, and trying to make people laugh. Um, but in the realization that um, I have sort of, there's very little I can talk about. Uh, in fact, because uh, I mean, there's just very little I, I, that I've got that's unusual. Um, um, so that that's difficult. But in terms of producing, um, I've always I've always really liked work that has either comedy or makes me laugh or surprises me. And, and, and I think shock and comedy have a lot of the same techniques in terms of uh, they take me in one direction and just as you think that's where they're going, they go somewhere co totally different. Yeah. <coughs> um, do you be audience like, find it funny, like your comedy shows? Oh, no, 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 not really. Uh, yes, I mean, sometimes they did. I, look, I was, why? Why? Why did they? Why did, I, 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 I was... Uh, what is it? I, I was good at comparing. I had good timing. I had good rapport. If something happened, I could respond to it. Um, I mean, if in in an audience, if you'd have been there with with your beard, that would have been like my dream. That was exactly what I dreamt of to get that moment of because it's a just a cracking beard and so much material in it. Um, but I, I I I didn't really sort of have anything at that time, aged twenty, that I desperately wanted to say whereas now actually I've got lots I want to say so I uh, I can talk incessantly um, and I can use comedy as one of the tricks um, but the comedy for me is only important if there's also a passion and a story and a belief <coughs> um, how important is um is technology in regards to um or <coughs> um digital technology in regards to um to feed at the arts and making festivals and other sort of basically like art festivals or like, like across the world? I think it, uh, we've got to the stage, we've, I think we've passed the tipping point. So when people say, uh, is there technology in it? It's a bit like saying, is it shots in Technicolor? Or, 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 or do you have running water in your house? I think digital and technology are just now um, absolutely core to everything. Um, I, I, do, I do think that nobody has yet invented the app or the technology or the computer or the um or the 
or, or the piece of kit that can turn shit art into great art. So there's no, it's not a silver bullet. I mean, if, if you have great work and you have a great story um, and you use technology, I think that can be brilliant. But then, uh, and I, I look at someone like Björk or um, Brian Eno who've done amazing work or Janet Cardiff or uh, so many people who've made great work using digital technology, but they made great work before that as well. And, and, and they would have made great work out of rocks and sand if that's what they all they had. So they were already brilliant. Yeah. <coughs> Who were your, um, your like your biggest sort of like <coughs> like influence like in theatre? In theatre, um, it started out being relatively conventional um, in terms of liking a well-made play, and I got. I didn't get over that, but I, I kind of moved away from that because I, I worked at the National Theatre for a bunch of years, so I saw so many well-made plays. So where was like the National Theatre? Like, so National Theatre's in London. It's on the South Bank. Yeah. It's got three theatres which hold um, about 800 people, about 1,200 people, and about 400 people, and it, it's kind of it's it's perceived to be one of the powerhouses of, of sort of the English language theatre. So uh, they open 18 shows a year and then have, uh, so I'd see lots and lots and lots of work. But since then I've, I've moved into, uh, I've, I've really, in, I enjoy people who make work which challenges form and which tells stories and which takes us on a journey. And, and I don't think that can be as linear as, as writing a play, handing it to a director, producing it often. <coughs> You've also been like beyond the previous director, <clears throat> Hammy, from 2012 to 2015 of the Perfect, um, the Perth International Arts Festival. <clears throat> um, what sort of best experiences have you had with that, and was there any sort of best white standout sort of <clears throat> sort of like moments in that um, sorry, in that period where um, you've obviously been like the um, artistic director of the Perth Arts Festival. I had, a, I had a really amazing time in Perth. Um, I loved it there. The people were fantastic. And um, interestingly, the, I mean, the resources were great as well. So we got to do some really surprising and interesting work. Um, highlights, uh, I, I think, I mean, the obvious one is The Giant, which was the final thing we closed on, which uh, had nearly one and a half million people at it over three days. And it, they're basically giant puppets that walk through the streets and and for me the point wasn't about scale it was about telling the Anzac story and telling the story of the Noongar nation and the indigenous people of Western Australia and the children of Western Australia so it gave an excuse to tell those stories um, we also did some really beautiful one-to-one -one work with people like uh, Sintidos and um, uh, and, and, and and great companies who, who were working sort of on a very individual personal level and and uh, Nalagat, who are the Israeli deaf-blind theatre company um, who are based in Jaffa and uh, every member of the company is either deaf or blind and some of them yeah. both so it's kind of it, the producing of it was incredible but also the effect it had on people was just brilliant right. <coughs> I'll just go over these questions quite quickly so um, <coughs> <coughs> Hi, man. so what's the best about shocks you what shocks you um, I'm shocked by, I'm shocked by, um, sometimes random violence, but usually not. I'm shocked by work which, um, challenges my worldview or expands my worldview. So, um, so, uh, confirmation by Chris Thorpe, I found deeply shocking because it's about his exploration of the fact that right-wing people are really, really smart sometimes. I mean, hyper right-wing people. Um, I was shocked by um, the effect by Lucy Preble um, and, and actually by her first play, The Sugar Syndrome, which was about paedophilia. Um, but you liked the central character who then you realise is a paedophile. And the shock of realising the, the horror of that. Um, I'm shocked by tremendous intimacy on stage or, or and, and tremendous honesty. And and then when something pushes me out of where I feel comfortable. So, I mean, Ganesh is the perfect example of, of, of actually almost not believing it would go where it was going as it was going there. Yeah. I mean, that, that, and, and knowing that whilst everybody on stage is complicit and everyone in the company is in that, I'm not, as an audience member, 
So thinking, I don't know. Uh, you've you all worked out. You've gone on the journey of yeah. how to respond. I've no idea. This is new to me. Plus, um, and as a as, whilst I'm watching it, what what am I doing? What's my role? So that that kind of put me right out of my comfort zone. <clears throat> <clears throat> What's the most provocative piece of art you've um you've <clears throat> me, you've like made um in your career? Um, well, in terms of making, uh, I did a production of Pinocchio for children, uh, which was uh, and we left Pinocchio hanging um, from a rope at the, at the interval, um, which uh, didn't do well for ice cream sales. I mean, parents were really pretty upset about, uh, but actually, that's the natural place where. So it was like a kids show. It was a kids show uh, with with almost death, um, and yeah, yeah, it was a kids show. And and but the je jeopardy was what I wanted. I wanted what wanted jeopardy? The jeopardy of is he going to survive? He's hanging from a tree, and that's in the original story. Uh, Disney cut out the bits where the cricket gets murdered and um, Pinocchio himself nearly dies and burns his feet off. So, um, in terms of children's work, in terms of work that I've been involved in the presentation of or programming of, um, I, I reckon. Robert Wilson's Craps last tape for the volume and the duration of the and the the repetition and the um, the difficulty of that first ten minutes in which he basically does a series of movements while it rains ear shatteringly loudly and he eats bananas and he, he he does this movement and it lasts about five minutes and he does it three times and and as he was about to go and do it again somebody behind me said if he eats one more banana so help me. And I, to this day, I don't know what they would have done, but um, that was the, that was about just the uh, just putting the audience through something that was almost unbearable and yet brilliant. Yeah. <clears throat> um, is there a line you will not um, cross that you probably never dare to cross? Is there like a line? I don't like real blood. In theatre, I, I mean, I don't, I don't need to see people cut themselves. I don't. I mean, I don't. I, that, that side of live art, no interest to me. Um, I am utterly bereft and out of my depth with um, mortality. is a big thing. From uh, mortality is a big thing, and, I, and I've seen so much work with death, and that's fine. But um, ch uh, child death and 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 death of, uh, and and bad things happening to children who are about the age of my children is uh, almost unbearable that I'll go there I just don't want to see it but if it's right that it should be happening I would program it but but it's more uh, the the mortality of my family is more is probably the most painful thing in the world and and I didn't have that uh, 10 years ago interestingly <coughs> um do you have any questions for me loads of questions uh, in terms of um so so what 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 shocks you <clears throat> I guess not much really. Um, uh, look, I guess nudity doesn't so much shock me. Sex doesn't shock me. Violence doesn't shock me that much. So, I guess nothing much so shocks me these days. And what, when you make a work, obviously you're making it as an ensemble most of the time. But what, 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 what do you want to see change in the world through making theatre? What's your thing? What do you want to change? <clears throat> yeah, I guess I had saying again. Um, <clears throat> but seeing refugees come home free of violence, um, <clears throat> um, more so digital technology, and um, and um, <clears throat> just to try and make a lot of changes in terms of um, of disability rights and having a voice within the disability community. Yeah. And what do you want from a festival director? Um, <clears throat> more cider and more food. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair answer. Um, John Farnway, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. This has been Price. I'm Scott Price. I've actually just spoken with um, John Van Holloway, who is a really quite a funny comedian and um, and a British um, artistic director. And please like and subscribe. And my hashtag is Price Exposed. <laughs>